Update 7 has changed the way in which we're able to build factories in Satisfactory thanks to Blueprints. And the community has come up with some truly unique ways of implementing Blueprints in our factories. However, today, after building my own factory based on Blueprints and having learnt a thing or two from it, I've decided I'm going to share with you all of the Blueprints that are going to be super useful in your playthrough. And yes, we will cover manifold lines for various factories. However, I'll also be sharing a blueprint that will allow you to turn this Z fighting into something a little bit more easy on the eyes like this. You can still see the foundation is there, but there is no Z fighting anymore. So if you do want to check that blueprint out, do make sure to stay until the end of the video. So the first blueprint and probably the most important one is the starter foundations. And that's just the this foundation, which is one by two foundations uh, wide and long. And the reason for that, if we jump over to a, a slightly larger area, You'll notice that if we place this down, um, we have we can use it in two ways. Now, the the first way, actually, if we plop, plop, plop it over here, would be to place it lengthways, widthways. Oh, I'm not sure; it's confusing. Um, but if we grab a module which use, has foundations as part of it, or if we're just using a foundation blueprint, which we'll talk about briefly, why it's important. Uh, in a moment, um, you'll notice that with a three by three grid, uh, we have this perfectly in line. And the reason why we want this as a two by one is if we do the same here, you'll notice how the grid now snaps in the middle, which generally speaking, you're not going to want. However, people will also have some blueprints that are perhaps four by four grids or two by two grids, in which case using this horizontally rather than lengthways is going to allow us to snap to the grid um, this way. So it actually has two purposes um, or, or two uses, I should say. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was actually using this particular blueprint, which is just a four by four grid. And the reason for that is you can see that it is much quicker to build a found, like starting foundation to work from with a four x four blueprint than it is to zoop tons of times. So I definitely recommend creating a larger blueprint as well, specifically for placing foundations. Now my next blueprint is actually one more for decoration and for, for those who have asked about it recently, it's the um, sign that is going to be vertically placed. Ooh weird auto save then or maybe it's just lag so from here we're going to if you wanted to do this in the vanilla uh, game at the moment without blueprints to get a sign to go vertically you're going to have to place down two um, pillars and then on the end of the pillar you need to rotate the sign so that's how we get these vertical signs but it's a bit, bit of a pain to do um, in order to, to place these for your build. So the, the next blueprint that I've got is the vertical sign blueprint. And this is already colored in um, so that it looks like lighting. As you know, we use this quite a lot in our build. By the way, if you want to save yourself time and effort creating these blueprints, all of these will be available on my Patreon page, along with all the other perks, such as my world saves, our satisfactory servers, and my occasional personal vlogs. Um, and if you do choose to support with an annual pledge this month, and this month only, you will get 15% off. So if that's something that interests you, do check out the link in the description or the card above now. Some of you may actually already recognize this one. So this is our storage area, and this has already been uploaded as a blueprint on the satisfactory calculator. So this one's freely available to everyone. If you do want to check it out, do head over to the website. You'll find it on there. It's also fully set up. So all you need to do is bring the items in through the entrance, and they will automatically go first to the storage and then up 
through these to where you should have some awesome things. Once you know what you want this to be, make sure to change this so that you have a clear idea of what's in there. And you can see it's nicely displayed here too. The next blueprint won't be suited to everyone. So we're going to be very briefly talking about load balancers. Uh, this is just one of the ones that we've got. Um, I'm still working on these, so you can expect these at a slightly later date, but this is a one to five, and I think I might be able to reduce the size. Uh, this is that one as well. A, I need to fix that. Uh, but that is a one to five load balancer. Moving on, we're now going to be talking about manifold uh, production lines. So the first one that we've got is going to be this one, which is four smelters. And as you can see here, this is housing 20 smelters. And so this allows you to process 600 iron ingots or copper ingots per minute. I'm not going to make a claim and say this is the most compact factory when it comes to smelters. You can fit more in a four x four grid. However, I do like how clean it looks. You can see there are clear walkways, so it's easy for you to create walking areas in your factories with this. And also all of the inputs are to the side and then all of the outputs go down the middle here, as, as you can see. Along with a smelter, I've also done a foundry. This particular one, as you can see, houses a total of 12 foundries and uh, is, again, pretty compact, easy to scale, and we've done a really cool system. So we have all of the uh, outputs coming down the middle here and out this side with our inputs all in the center above. Now, if we look at the system, it is pretty compact. And how we've managed to do this is running all of the splitters above the mergers. And so from here, we have a elevator that goes directly into the right output of the found, uh, input of the foundry. And then we also have a cornered elevator going to the left input as well. And so this will allow you, I believe off the top of my head, it's 540 ingots, uh, steel ingots per minute with this system. Moving on from the foundries and the smelters, we have the constructors. So this is a, another build that I've done, which I'm actually really happy with. Uh, we're just going to place it here for you to, to view. This is a total of 16 constructors with a middle floor, which is dedicated to the uh, logistics. And so we have underfloor and overfloor logistics here. You can see we have our walkways on the lower levels. And then we have a glass floor so that you can see all of the resources being um, taken along the buses. And if you want to know which is the input side, uh, then I've also placed some signs as lighting as well. Next, let's have a look at some bigger buildables. So the first one that we've got is going to be this assembler build. Um, this one's a little bit different. It's one that I played with and I think we will uh, design more factories like this. And it's got plenty of space underneath for underfloor logistics. And then above it has the three assemblers which are producing whatever you'd like. Um, you can see they haven't been selected. And we also have this uh, section here, which is going to be for the power logistics. So you might need to add some supports to that eventually. At this point, I could show you things for manufacturers, but I'd rather leave that to you. If you'd like me to do some blueprints for manufacturers, let me know in the comments below. Um, the next one that I do have, though, is going to be one that's also available on the satisfactory calculator currently, um, but you will find this also on our Patreon, is a refinery setup. 
This particular blueprint is designed to have two separate floors that stick together. So here, if we press nine, this is our ground logistics floor. So we can place that there. And this is going to do all of the logistics because with refineries, they are pretty large. So we have a floor for us to sit the next refineries on top of, as you can see here. And from here, we can place this down. And this is ready to receive liquid inputs and also to connect below if we just grab this and grab a elevator. You can see how easy it is to set up. I might remove these. I'm not sure if they're needed anymore. Um, the first time we built this, we, we did, but the blueprints have changed a bit since then. Along with our inputs, we also have our outputs on this side. Again, it's just a case of connecting these up. And then you are ready to go. And these are also daisy chained for ease of uh, power connections. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And obviously if you want to see more and haven't already, do subscribe. For those of you who wanted to have a look at the next one, the Z fighting um, foundation system that we've got. Um, let's just place this down here. I'll show you it in action. So we're going to purposefully place things on a, a weird grid. Thankfully, the game is much better at dealing with the Zed fighting, but you can see some here. If we change the material now, to say, oh, that didn't help. There we go, that's better. You can see we've got plenty of Zed fighting and all we're going to do is go to our blueprint. We've got the total Zed fighting fix. And what we're going to do is place this over the particular um, foundation that we want to fix. So for example, we have this one here. I'm going to delete the foundation underneath it and then grab another two meter foundation. And we're going to snap this to this foundation. From the, uh, snap it to the below edge. Really important that you snap it to this one, not another one. And then when we remove this, you can see we have fixed the foundation. And the way we've done that is just ever so slightly lifted up, lifted up. I think that's right. <laughs> um, placed the foundation slightly higher than the others. And so that's going to um, stop that Z fighting. But guys, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star, and Shoku, the M and Wolf, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the City Rat. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.